Uh, he has a beautiful word for you. Amen. Why don't you turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34. And I, I title this, you only continue to report, I, I title this, Pray More, Worry Less. Pray more, worry less. If you could grab a hold to that, your whole life would be turned around. But we don't. We get scared and we run and we cry and we go to people that can't help you and you go to other people that can't help you and you just need to keep going forward in God's hands and put your trust in the Lord. So in Matthew 6, 25-34, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, not about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than the food and the body more than clothing? Stop and think for that for a minute. How much time do we put in the word of God. How much time we put in in our lives talking to the Lord. And, and, and you need to just think, listen, if, if, you, if you listen to this word and go home and do nothing else, and do, no, and do nothing else, it sure is going to benefit you. We know how easy it is to forget things. How many of you, I mean, how many of you think about something and this and you know you forgot all about it? How many of you heard a sermon, somebody get outside and ask you, oh, that was a remarkable sermon. Good, what was the title? They couldn't tell you no more than the man in the moon. That's why this is so important to come to the house of the Lord, to get what God has given you, and to move on that and watch what he does. It says, look at the birds of the air, for they neither reap nor gather into barns. Yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. I just think, God takes time to feed the birds. My wife went out and bought one of them bird things that you hang in a tree. Man, them birds eat that thing up. And she, she had it in there one day, man, it was gone. So I said, wow, man, what is this? So I said, well, you feed them. I'm not feeding them. And, 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 but if God would take care of them, Enough for my wife to go out and buy a bird thing. He must tell you something. He must tell you something that we did somewhere in our life we were falling short. Are you not more valuable than they are? Which of you worry can add one cubit to his stature? Which one of you? That's why it's so important for you to read this word, to bring this word to yourself, to, 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 to stop letting the world fearfully run you, chase you. I mean, I, mean I, look at, I look at the church this morning. You know, where are the people that were here? Oh, I know what happened. Some got angry, some got mad, some didn't care, some just thought their own thing. That's not the answer. The answer is to follow God's word. You know, and the only way you're going to do that is to get involved in it. Father, help us right now as we bring forth your word. Let us pray, my God as we continue to move in your light and not in ours. Help us to put everything together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things that we need to do is we need to understand what God is saying. And when that happens, you'll get the whole venue of what God is saying. Let me ask you something. How many of you know how to cook? Uh, at least some people won't, won't go hungry here. Yeah? You know, you take an egg, a flour, some flour, and some chocolate chips, right, and vanilla, and what, do you, what can you make? Chocolate chip cookies, I like it to me, right? 
Come on, I know a lot of you like chocolate chip cookies. I know I do, you know, I have to watch what I eat them though. But then, if someone gives you that ingredient, you take it home and don't do anything with it, what good is it? It's no good at all, you know? Now, now for the younger generation, you guys, if I say intimates, you know what I'm talking about. There's no cooking there. Just open the box up and eat it. Nice cold glass of milk. You see, the thing is this. We got to work this word. We have to work it. If you don't, it, 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 won't, it, won't, it, won't, it won't happen for you. Today, America is in the middle of an epidemic of worry. In the middle of an epidemic of worry. We worry about our health. We worry about our money. We worry about relationships, appearances, what people think of us. And all these things cause anxiety and it's not of God. Now, I'm not telling you not to get dressed, not to look nice. I'm not saying that. You, you should look nice. You should, you, know, you, you should be able to walk out the house and, and people look at you and say, oh, that's nice. You know, I got a compliment the other day on, on a pair of shoes I had on. You know, now I didn't put those shoes on to get complimented. I put those shoes on because they, they, they matched everything as I had. You know, and uh, so I found out that that you know something, we have to understand that we can be a magnet for people by what we say, what we do, how we do it, the clothes we wear, the places we go, to how we worship. That's so why we need to ask the Lord to help us. The church has got to learn how to worry how not to worry. And when they learn not to do that, anxiety will, will, will come, will, will, won't come over them. Illness, physical emotions. Do you know that 40 million people in the U.S., 40 million people in the, in the U.S. today suffer from anxiety? Anxiety leads to depression. Depression is leading cause of disability in the world today. Think about it. You go home, on the way home, you think about, well, what am I going to eat? Is that worthwhile to worry about? If you don't have food in the house, you can go out and buy some. We got enough restaurants to, to last a million years. But we need to understand that God is trying to tell us we need to concentrate on him. Americans consume over 80% of antidepressants and anxiety of med medications. There are 18 verses on worry in the Bible and 53 verses on anxiety in the Bible. It must be pretty important if God would write that much about it. Because he knows that we, that we are going to follow behind other people. And that's not what he's looking for. He's looking for us to follow him. We follow him, we got it. You follow him, you don't have to worry about these things. He'll be right there for you. There are 18 verses on worry, 18, and 53 verses on anxiety. Our worries have a way of following us into the sanctuary and sitting with us in the pews, on the chairs. Some of you right now, you're not thinking about what I'm saying. Your mind is on something else that ain't worth a dime. And when we find out what that is, the better off we're going to be because it's stealing is stealing what God has given you. In, in, the, in the text, Jesus identifies four sources of worry and suggests some strategies for coping with worry in our daily lives. That's why you, we have to pray for pray that the, that the Lord will touch you and show you what you, what you can do to, to get blessed. We worry about things which we have no control over. None of us, you, you can't control what happened to you. Think about it. Can you, can you control it? I try, it doesn't work. You know, so I have, to, I have to hand it over to the Lord. I give it to him, he can handle it. He made us. He's our Lord. Ask the Lord to help you do that. Our worries have a way of following us. Every, everywhere we go, we end up by doing something dumb because we're so worried about it and get anxiety 
that we don't even realize that God is in, is, is in the picture. Our worries have a way of following us, and when it does, it shows us, it shows us that we are failing, but we are not failing. Jesus Christ said that he, that he is our Lord, he is our King, and whatever you ask for him, he'll give it to you. Now some people say, well, he didn't give me this, maybe you didn't deserve it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you just did, did, did you asked for the wrong thing. You know, God's not going to give you something that's going to kill you. I remember years ago, I, I preached at a, at a, I don't know where I was at, but it was, it was about a story about a guy who had bought a brand new Cadillac. And he was riding up and down the street. And all of a sudden, the car broke down. He got out and walked, left the car in the middle of the street. He said, why is that? Because he ain't had no money to fix it. How many of you buy stuff that you can't afford to really have? Ask the Lord to help you to move on stuff that you can, that you can do things with. We worry about things that, that come into our lives and, and we, we feel that we just can't control it. We can control it. We can, in a sense, control it. We worry about them. Not only does it not change, but also robs us of our peace makes it hard to deal with, with them when they come. Worry is opposite of trusting God. If you start worrying, you're taking the situation you got away from God, and you try to fix it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fixer. My wife's a fixer. She'd get a screwdriver and a hammer, and she'll start doing those things. I don't do that. For some reason, I try. It just don't work. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that God says, let me handle this for you. Let me show you what I can do and how I can do it. And then once they do that, watch, watch how simply God makes it. Ask the Lord. We must trust him. We must believe in him. We should pray for the courage to change that what we can, that we can practice. Oops, we can practice to accept what, it, what we can. What chances we can do, God will give it to us. We worry about things that do not really matter. Jesus points out that some of these things are more important than others. Many of these things we worry about are simply not worth the effort. It is not worth the effort for you to worry about something you can't change. Much ado about nothing is the way that Shakespeare put it. Jesus says we can overcome worry by learning to seek first the kingdom of God. I mean, there's no, there's no scientist. There's no, there's no, you, you got to trust the Lord. You can't fix this. You, you, you can't fix the COVID. I mean, every time it's like they got to fix one, something else come out. So what are we going to do? Worry? I, I like. I, I, I have. A, I have a problem with even with the statistics. They say, well, 1,800 people died yesterday. Okay. Would they die out? Mm hmm. Well, we just did under COVID. We got to ask the Lord to show us what's going on here. I mean, God bless the doctors, don't get me wrong. God bless the police officers, God bless all of them. But there's something that's not right, and I can't put my hand on it. And that's where we got to trust the Lord. Jesus says we can overcome worry by learning to seek the kingdom of God. And I just love uh, Matthew 6, 33. It says, it tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You got to seek his righteousness. That means you got to dig in that Bible. You got to get on your knees or just pray that God will help you get to the place where you should be. You go home and things start worrying you. Stop worrying about it. You can't change it. I mean, actually, there's some things you can't change. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about stuff that seems like it's impossible. That's when you take it and you give it to the Lord. 
when you give it to the Lord, then you can handle it. Because he's handling it, actually. But we got to seek you first the kingdom of God. Overcome, overcome this fear. Learn to seek the kingdom first. The Greek word for worry literally means to be pulled in different directions. How many of you feel that way sometimes? You got somebody pulling you on one side, somebody pulling you on the other side, somebody telling you what to do, somebody telling you not what to do, and you get all this stuff and you don't know what's going on. That's why you got to hang on to the Lord. You hang on to him, he'll show you how to do that. And ask the Lord. Learn to put things first. We can reduce some of the artificial, self-made anxieties of life. What do you mean self-made? Self-made. We, we, most of the time, we, we create our own problems. Think about it. Honor to it. We create our own problems. We worry about things that have not yet happened. How are you going to worry about something that hasn't, that's not even there? You can't grab it, you can't touch it, you can't move it, you can't do anything with it. So why worry about it? But the Lord can. That's why our job is to get on our knees and pray. Ask the Lord to help you. We worry about things that have not yet happened. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. There's nothing you can do about tomorrow. It's not here yet. You wouldn't even know. If, if I say, uh, listen, go outside and tell them worry and worry about tomorrow. Where are you going to go? You're going to go outside, outside in, the, in, in, the, in the rain and do what? Get wet. That's what you're going to do. But God is saying, come to him. He'll show you what to do. He'll show you how to do it. I was listening to the, 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 the choir the, the, the choir this morning, and I was thinking about how they rehearse and how they come and do what they have to do, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing. But we, don't, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't worry about it. But we, sometimes we have to. Sometimes you don't even know if you're going to have a choir on Sunday, the way this world going. But like what we said, learn to do what is right. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The word, the, the, the word says, what if? What if are the two most worry-filled words in the English language? Think about it. What if this happens? Oh, if I go there, what if that happens? If I do this, where is that going? What you worried about, you, don't, you can't change it. You can't change it. You got to follow God. You got to do what the Lord tells you to do. Think about how many times you have tried to change something and it just didn't work. What happened? Anxiety came over you. Aggravation came into your life. Things got worse. That's why you got to lean on the Lord. Ancient, ancient thoughts over the future does not change anything, but it does steal today's joy. Even when we know something is going to happen, our fear and dread of it is almost always worse than the fear itself. We, we, get, we get fearful over things that we got no control. We get fearful over things that God said he can take care of. But we don't do it. We don't do it. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Worry about things that are real. As the text says, there are some things in life that are real and some things are hard. They are the physical necessities of food, clothing, and shelter. They are difficult circumstances that can threaten us. Yet, Jesus says, when these things are not worthy of worrying, because they are things God is perfecting and willing to able to help us and to be in our lives. Your Heavenly Father knows your needs. He promises that if you seek first the kingdom, the needs will, 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 will be supplied, and he will bring us through anything, if you're willing to trust him. 
when you go through a season of worry, when you go through a season, of, and you're going to go through seasons. It's going to be a, how many times can you look back on your life and say, wow, that was awesome. With your hands. Boy, you live a miserable life, man. Oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, I pray for you all. See, I can, I can do that because I know what God has done for me, what he will do for me, and I'm not perfect. My health is terrible. So what am I going to do? Can I worry about it? You all no help. Can I worry about it? No. I, I, I can't. No, it's not going to work. Trust in the Lord. We got enough funeral homes with people. We don't need it. We don't need any more. Ask the Lord to help you to do that, and he will. When you go through a season of pause, when there's so many distractions or disappointments, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Hang in there and ask God to help you to see what's going on. And when you do that, you'll get the answer. Helen Keller said, Helen Keller said, when the, when the door of happiness closes, another one opens. You're not going to get everything you want when you want it, how you want it. You may, God may give you pieces of time because, why? You can't handle it all. You can't handle it all. But often looks, we often look so long at, at a closed door that when a, a one opens, we don't even see that. We don't even see I was talking to a young kid the other day. I said, man, just go to college. Take anything. Take, I don't care, take roaches. Do something. Just go, to, just go to college. Just go to college and learn something. And, he, and that's, what, that's what he's doing. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transgress all his explanations, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. How do we do this? I didn't tell you, you've got you to do certain things. You got to do. But first of all, you're going to have to learn how to spend time with the Lord. I tell people all the time, spend seven minutes with God and it'll, it'll, it'll make your life turn around. Seven minutes with God. Think you can do that every day? Well, I'm not sure what to read. Get a daily bread. They're free. It'll tell you It'll tell you where to read, how to read, what to expect. And then once that happens, you'll see where you're going. You got some idea. The other thing, if you have a critical situation, make it a prayer project. Make it a prayer project. Don't start crying and belly aching on other people because they ain't going to help you. They probably got more problems than you. fast. Simply start with one meal or put, it, put aside that cake or cookies you like. Music, Facebook, TV. How many you watch, how many you on Facebook? And I said, oh, you don't have to show me. I know you don't want to say it anyway. But I know. I know. Fast simply start was getting ready, getting, giving up something that you like to do and watch and see what God does. Diane and I have been fasting over a year and reading books together and praying constantly for things to happen. Why, is that, why does that mean that? Colossians 4, verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and, th and thankful. There's a, in the, a person in this church, and I can't think of who it was now, my wife may know, who hands out prayer stickers that says, watch and pray. See, you ain't listening. What do I do with you? you know, I'm just giving you a plug, man. You just dump my plug on the ground. 
But what he did, what he gave, he, he gave us this, this, this watch and pray. And you'd be surprised how many people ask, what does that mean? How can I pray? And you need to have an answer. Know how to tell someone to pray. And the best thing you can do is hand them that little daily bread. It'll get them started. And then once you do that, watch and see how blessed you are. All over Long Island, I, I see these little, these little stickers that says, watch and pray. You know? So when that happens, I just say, thank you, Lord. That he has enough nerve. Enough nerve. There you go again. You left me again. <laughs> uh, take that word and put it in your heart. Take that word and put it in your pocketbook. Take that word and use it and watch and see how you be blessed. That's the God that we serve. And once you do that, watch and see what the Lord does. He's so powerful. It's very simple. The, the, the scriptures are simple. You just read them. Ask the Lord to show you what you don't understand. And today they have so many helps and dictionaries and everything, you can find it. If not, go online, just type the word in. It'll tell you where it came from, where is it going, and how's it getting there. How's that? And the kids like that, young girls like that, young guys like that, you know? But we need to understand that God has got us going. So let us continue to trust the Lord, come to church, because this is where you're going to hear the word of God. Come to church. Someone says, well, I don't really think church is working fine, then don't go. But I tell you this, if you want to go, you want to come to church, you need to get up on Sunday morning and get out here. Don't worry about the rain, don't worry about the snow, don't worry about anything. And watch what God does. And here comes my wife. I was just sitting there and God really prompted me to share something with, um, with the church. Um, that worry is a very heavy thing, and you know, we as Christians, like, we, we we're not supposed to worry, you know, we're not supposed to worry, and as I was listening to the, um, the message that Bobby had, was given, I was, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, um, you know how sometimes God puts something on your heart and it's hard to put into words, but I was addicted to worry, and, and I'm not, I'm talking recently, that worry can become an addiction. It wasn't. It was about five years ago. There was so much going on. We have um, we have eight kids and 18 ch grandchildren. So you can imagine that very high risk for those of you that know our background. You know, they came out of the we came out of drug and drug, you know heroin addiction. Both Bobby and I, our children were caught up in that. They're adults, but they they do well. Don't don't get me wrong. They are they're all doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs. But with that comes some high-risk behaviors and things. And our younger one, um, he, he struggled with a 15-year heroin addiction. And, and that, you know, that can keep you up at night if you're a mother with all the, and he overdosed 14 times in those 15 years. And then Bobby's health, as he said, and finances with LICCV, uh, uh, a ministry, uh, especially of what we do, is not popular. And so um, I realized I became addicted to worry. And at night, I, a list would run through my mind. It would just run through my mind. And then I don't know how long it took me to realize that I was really addicted to this thing, worrying about, talk, and, and it was like a, it was almost like, you know how you see those reels going around and around in my, in my head and I had to stop it. And I'm a mature Christian. I'm saved almost 50 years. And um, we get caught up in these things. We're only flesh and blood. So I, I don't know if any of you get, maybe not, didn't get caught up like I did, but I got set free and the Lord told me what to do. You know, I went, I went to a sister in the Lord and she just laid hands on me and it broke that thing. And so what I do is I, I, I sing songs. If, if that starts in my head at night, I'm extremely hyperactive. 
So going to sleep at night, you know, I, I go to sleep, I, have, I need to read the word and things before I go to sleep. But if that list starts going and I just stop it, I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And then I, I get, grab a song, I always, always listening to songs. And I can wake up in the middle of the night, just you know how you turn over and you wake up just a little bit. And that thing might try to get me and I just start with that song again. And now, I don't even have to do that anymore. I wake up with a song in my heart when I turn over. I wake up with a song in my heart when I get up. And um, that, I, that thing is broken. I, I don't worry um, uh, like that anymore. And during the day also, during the day also, as soon as thoughts just come, you know, negative thoughts, um, you know, about how are you gonna do this? Trust me, we, we carry big burdens uh, because of our ministry. And um, so I know that there are people here. I know, like our sister said, that Bobby is a general. But any man of God that be gets behind this pulpit or any pulpit with the word, that means that there are people here that are struggling with this. And this word is for, for us, for us today. So I'd like everybody to stand, if you don't mind. And... Um, you know, those of us that we're burdened, we are burdened with things. I don't know about you, when I come to church and the worship starts, I, I, I need to unburden myself. And as a young Christian, I would go to church three, four, five. Remember those times when there used to be three services on a Sunday, yep. right? Friday night, three services on a Sunday, Tuesday morning and Wednesday, I was there all the time. And so, and I was in the choir. So, um, and every time I would come and just unburden myself. And so, you know, we need to unburden ourselves from the cares and the woes of this world. Listen, we live in a very broken world. And so we, we need to be able to come to this altar and leave all that stuff here with the Lord. And you know what? Myself included. We, when we, sometimes we pick it back up and we take it home with us. And that's a discipline too, to learn how to bring it to the altar, put it at the feet of Jesus, leave it there and get home, get, leave and go home set free from that. And when that thing tries to remind you, when you go home, you say, oh, I'm sorry, that's over there. I left that in church. And what you guys do with it, I don't know. You must sweep it out of the way. She takes care of it on Friday night. She gets rid of all that stuff you leave at the altar on Friday nights. So I just thank you. I don't know, Bobby, if you want to pray with them, you know, yeah, what them you want to do. Front. Yeah, let them come down front. Yes, if everybody could, anybody that has something on their heart uh, that, that you just want to come and lay at the feet of Jesus, you know, sickness, wayward children, wayward spouses, um, anything at all, family matters, jobs, finances, oh my goodness, at this time, um, and anything that you might have. So I don't know if the, the, the music ministry will come back up or somebody will play some something as people come. I know there are needs. We're such a needy people. I don't know about you. I'm needy. I don't know. I have, you know, I'm needy. I need to come on a daily basis. And what Bobby said, what uh, Pastor Bobby said, is that daily devotions, you know, once a week here is not enough. Can I just want you to know, if you ate once a week, what would you look like? What would you look like? Well, we have a spirit man that we have to feed. We have to feed it. I remember that movie. I don't know when it was. It was a plant that used to say, feed me feed me. Well, if you don't feed your spirit man on a daily basis, you are going to be spiritually anorexic. So we want good, strong spirit men to fight the battles that we have. And we thank you, Lord. We just thank you for all those that are, you know, coming and um, intentionally. One of the words, I ask God to give me a word every year. And for a few years, the word was intentional. So we have to be intentional about leaving those cares and woes at the altar and, and give them to the Lord.